Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 14. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we're going to change our movement system slightly, or actually quite a bit, um, just so that our movement maps better to the graphics that we've drawn. But first let's review what we did last time. Okay, so last time, I'll just run the game quickly, we added in some tile collisions and a couple of debug features as well, but the main change we made is it is now uh, impossible for our player to walk over the walls, which uh, is pretty nice. Uh, it makes it feel a lot more like a game um, and less like some scrolling pictures. So let's have a quick look at how we did that. If we open up our keyboard movement, we can see that now when we update the player's position um, based on the keyboard or based on the keys, we grab the current room and that is because we added to our room method a, or to our room um, class, sorry, we added the walkable method and this tells us if the tile at um, a given x and y position is walkable or not and we're able to use that combined with dx and dy which is the difference um, between where our entity is and where we'd like our entity to be we're able to use that to decide whether the entity or the player in this case should be able to walk on that tile or not if they're allowed to walk on the tile we go ahead and we update their position if they're not allowed to walk on that tile then we just don't do anything and that results in the player being able to walk on any of the floor tiles but when they try to move into a solid tile like a wall uh, we just don't let them, we don't update their movement and they stay where they are. If we take a quick look at our walkable method as well on room we can see that what we do is we grab the current tile from our tile map and at the moment just based on what tile uh, we're looking at or what uh, what character we're looking at in the tile map we decide whether it's walkable or not. Eventually we'll probably expand this um, and change it a bit but it's working for now. So rather than carry on with our tiles this episode we're going to take a break from uh, sort of tiles and instead we're going to review how our movement works. And this is because um, if we look at the sort of the art style we've gone with we're using 45 degree angles to move the wall in and out but our player moves up and down and so if I stand next to this wall which is uh, so this shaded wall is supposed to be sort of mo coming towards the screen um, but the player just moves up and down and it doesn't feel like our player really matches up with our artwork and in order to fix this we're going to use uh, project um, projections or something called uh, projections or an oblique projection to make our player appear to move in three dimensions even though they're moving on a flat screen. So let's take a quick look at a diagram. Okay so if we remember to when we first did some movement we said that our game world was 3D and we had to translate it uh, into 2D to appear on a screen. We're now going to take another look at how we do that translation and we're going to use a bit more of a sophisticated approach and we're going to create what is called a cabinet projection. Or we're going to start with a cabinet projection and we might tweak it a bit just so that it looks nice and feels good for whoever is playing our game. Um, a cabinet projection is a way of drawing 3D objects on a 2D screen. It was first created to draw furniture, like cabinets, that's why it's called a cabinet projection. And how it works is we take, the, we take our 3D coordinates and we map them onto our 2D coordinates by the two equations which are shown on the right hand side of the screen. So we say our x position on the screen, or xd for x draw, um, is equal to our 3D x position plus half of cos uh, theta, where theta is an angle and the ang we know the angle we're using, we can work it out from our tiles, it's uh, 45 degrees. And for the y, y screen position or y draw position, we just say it is the y 3D or world position plus half sine theta. 
And that's really all there is to it. We need to make uh, a couple of changes. There's a few places in our game that assume um, certain things about how we're doing reprojection at the moment, but we're going to go through and change those in this episode. So the place to start is probably with our entity. So let's just close everything and bring up the entity class. And if we look at our update method on our entity class, we can see where we currently map between our x, y, and z positions and our drawing positions. And this is the code we are going to change. So exactly as we said in um, on the diagram, we are going to go ahead and say draw x is equal to x plus half or 0.5 times self dot z times math dot cos so we're just using the built-in math methods in Lua or Lua's built-in maths library uh, math dot cos and here just in order to get theta let's actually pull it out so theta needs to be in radians rather than degrees we know it's 45 degrees but fortunately the maths library has a way of changing between um, changing between degrees and radians. So math.rad will change 45 degrees into radians. Radians is just another way of measuring angles. Uh, it's a slightly different system. Um, it means you get different numbers, uh, which are all multiples of pi, uh, but we don't really need to know that. We just need to know that we need to convert our degrees into radians using math.rad. So go ahead and say math.cos theta. And then for our y position, we know that it is y or our y 3D position plus 0.5 times self dot z times math dot sine theta. Okay, and the other thing we're going to need to change is in our keyboard movement, we currently change our x and y positions, but we now want to change our x and z positions. So what we're doing is we're also, um, at the same time as updating our movement code, we're flipping our y and our z axes around. And this is really just so that um, the axes in the game line up with a lot of the documentation. I noticed that uh, most of the Wikipedia articles uh, and all of that stuff have the y axis as being up and down in the game world as if you are jumping, the x-axis is left and right, and the z-axis is the one that goes forwards and backwards into and out of the screen. So just to sort of keep with the convention, we're flipping those angles around. So that means dy is going to become dz. So let's just update this. It means new y is now new x. Um, what else does it mean? It means that we need to uh, go ahead and say entity.z equals z and it also means we need to think about how we do our uh, walk checks or our room.walkable checks because this will no longer work in the way we expect. So if I just finish changing this and let's see if this works. Yep, we can see that we're now in the wrong place. So we need to make sure that when we check uh, whether a tile is walkable or not, we are using the screen or the draw coordinates rather than the um, world coordinates. Which means we need to do exactly the same maths that we are doing here. Um, we need to do it a second time in our keyboard dot movement. But rather than put it in our keyboard dot movement, let's actually pull it out. We already have a module called vector.lua for dealing with uh, vectors and this kind of uh, positional logic. So let's go ahead and create a vector, another method on our vector helper class or helper module, I suppose. Um, and we'll call this, a, let's call it world to screen. And if we give this a 3D vector, so just an, a set of X, Y, and Z coordinates as the input, what we expect it to return is the screen, uh, the X and Y screen position that those coordinates line up with. 
So in order to do that, we just have to return an x coordinate of x or sorry vec three. So the x on our vector um, plus 0.5 exactly as we did in VNC 0.5 times vec3.z times math.cos of and if we pull out we're going to assume theta is fixed for now so let's just say local theta equals in fact if it is fixed and it's not going to change we can actually pull it out into the module itself. So we'll say theta is maths dot radians of 45 degrees. Then down here we can just use our theta. And this will just save us having to calculate that every time we, uh, we run this function. And for the y coordinate, we just do sine theta. So now we have our world to screen method. We can head back to our keyboard movement. Let's require our vector module. And we just do that by, um, just like with our other requires, but we haven't done one for a while. So let's recap it. We just call require and we assign it to a variable. So here we want source dot math dot vector dot vector there we go and so now down here we should be able to grab a screen position which will be vector dot what do we call it world to screen of our new x and our new y Oh, sorry, these should be a vector, so let's uh, just wrap them up as a vector. So x it will be equal to new x, y will be equal to new y, and z will just be equal to, oops, sorry, not new y, new z, we just changed, we just flipped that around, new z, and y will just be equal to entity.y because we no longer change that inside our keyboard movement, or at least we don't at the moment. So when we check whether somewhere is walkable, we want to use our screen position dot x and our screen position dot y. Okay. And we can see it is now working. So now when we move backwards, we move diagonally, but we move diagonally in line with our wall. And as we move forwards, we move closer to the screen. Uh, one thing to note is we move faster side to side than we do forwards and backwards and that's because uh, a cabinet projection assumes that you are only drawing any diagonal lines or any diagonal lines at 45 degrees you only draw half the length of them rather than the whole length but from a gameplay point of view I'm not sure this feels right so we're going to uh, mess with reality a bit and inside our, where are we, inside a vector, let's actually, rather than 0.5, let's just use one for now, because it just feels nicer. It feels strange to uh, suddenly be moving half of your speed in a given direction. So that feels a bit nicer. We're still able to, oops, what's going on there? So now, ah, yes, so very important. Um, this is because we now have one set of code doing our world to screen um, our world to screen conversions in our keyboard movement and a completely different set of code inside of our entity. So let's use the same code everywhere. That would be sensible and that was the reason we pulled it out in the first place. So if we now use our vector um, module inside of entity as well, source.math.vector, And where's our, that's inside of update, it's our conversion code. We should be able to replace 
all of this or most of this with just a call to local um, a call to vector world to screen and in here we can just say x is equal to entity.x in fact we don't even need to do this because I believe here we go our entity already has a two position method so as long as we move our update function down here we can go ahead and say world to screen on to position of self because we already have self here and that will give us our screen positions so we no longer need to calculate theta here and here we can just go ahead 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 and say screen pause dot y for y and screen pause dot x for x and now uh, the nice advantage is if we decide to change any of our projection code it's all inside of vector dot lua there we go okay so other things we need to look at well one thing I'm going to do now partly because um, someone asked me in the comments whether I was going to do it or not um, and I think it's probably a sensible time to do it because we're looking at movement anyway is to introduce the idea of delta times so delta times is the time it takes uh, to run an update of the game logic and this is a value which the framework actually gives us and it passes it in as an argument to love.update for us so if I just stick dt in here we now have access to the time it took to run the previous uh, the previous game update and this is a really useful value because it means we can make sure um, our movement is always smooth our game won't always update at the same speed because different things happen in different update loops if there's a lot going on in a given update loop it will take slightly longer to update the game but if we know how long the updates uh, take we can smooth out our movement um, just by timesing things by the delta time value um, yeah we can smooth out our movement so even if a game takes a long time to update we move well, if the game takes a long time to update, we'll move slightly further. If the game takes a short amount of time to update, we won't move as far. But to the player, it will look like the movement is much smoother because it will be spread out across all of the frames. So what we'll do at the same time as we uh, change our projection, we're also going to just pass dt into game.update. Then inside of our game state, so just close a few files. inside of our game state when we update we are going to say self.dt is equal to dt and dt is now an argument that gets passed into the update method and then when we initialize our game state we just need to, uh, or we don't have to, but it will be nice just to make sure that we set dt to a value to begin with. So we'll just set it to zero for the first loop, but then every time else it is going to be set to the correct value of dt. And now in our keyboard movement, when we work out our new x and our new z, we're just going to times dx by game.dt and times dz by game.dt and just checking we do have the game state available in our update method already so that should be fine so if we run our game again we'll find that we suddenly move very slowly and this is because as soon as we start to times things by dt we really need to change the way we think about movement in our game instead of thinking about a flat number which gets added every um, every time the game updates instead it's more useful to think about how far do we want a player to move in a given time frame so if we go back into our main .lua file this is where we set the player's speed when we create the player entity it's currently set to 2 because we were just expecting or previously we've been expecting to add to um, every frame that a button is down but now what we really want to think about is how far should a player be able to move per second 
So let's just say for now they should be able to move four tiles a second and we know that tiles are eight tiles wide so that just gives us four times eight which is 32. There we go so now we have sort of a comparable maybe slightly slower to what we had before but at least it is a uh, it's uh, much or it is smoother. If we were to slow down our game, we would see that we would have a smoother, at least smoother player movement. We need to go back and change the other things as well. Um, I think the other thing we've done, if we run our game, is we'll find that our entities no longer, or can no longer follow us perfectly just because uh, they use a different coordinate set. So we'll have to go in and fix them eventually as well. Um, but I think what I will fix in this episode is uh, the rooms because now we need to make sure we're using the screen coordinates when we update our rooms. Just showing that the uh, room transitions no longer work. And this will also fix the problem where if we go into a uh, if we go into room two and then move back into room one, we get stuck in a wall. So let's fix these two problems. So if we go to room.lua and take a look at our update function inside of room because that's where we decide whether we need to move to the next room or the previous room, we can see that we currently use player.x and I think what we want to use is player.drawx. There we go. So now we notice if we move backwards, we just get uh, pushed back into the room. And that's because in our map function, or sorry, in our map module, uh, that's where, if we just take a look here, when, the, when we want to move room, we call out to our map and we call next room and all previous room on the map. So if we look at our map.lua, take a look at these functions, we can see that we set the player's x value um, based on the screen, yes, based on the screen coordinates of the game rather than the world coordinates. And this was fine when x mapped perfectly to the, uh, between the world and the screen, but now we've introduced the idea of projections that isn't true anymore. So we could try and come up with the maths to switch between a, um, a screen position and the world position, but because um, I'm feeling slightly lazy, instead let's just add another debug function to our game, uh, which tells us where the player is in, um, in our world coordinates, and we'll pick some sensible world coordinates for our player to start and end in. So let's go into our game state, which is in logic game state and we're going to add onto our game state debug string and this is really the beginnings of coming up with a console. At the moment it's going to be an incredibly simple console. We're just going to say um, debug string is an empty string and then when we draw our game the last thing we're going to do is if debug remembering that in the last episode we added the debug flag to control whether we um, display any of our debug features or not. But if debug mode is turned on, then we'll say love.graphics.print and uh, we just print self.debugString. So if we run our game of the moment, we shouldn't print anything, and we don't. Now inside our entity And see, now actually inside of our keyboard movement. Keyboard movement, because we don't want to run it for every single entity, we only want to move it, uh, run, or we only want to write a debug line for 
our player and our player uses the keyboard movement, we can just set game dot debug debug string sorry is equal to and we'll say entity dot x and you use two dots to join strings together in Lua so if you want to stick lots of strings together um, you just use two dots so we'll say x space y space z spaces uh, let's use commas actually commas so now if we run our game we see that we have the x y and z position at the top of the screen here but only when our debug mode is turned on so a good starting position for a room looks to be let's say here so this is about minus 20x yz so about minus 20x uh, about 50 yeah about 50z so I'm actually going to move these to be inside of the room because it makes much more sense for a room to know where its start and end should be rather than the map. So inside of our room, uh, let's put it next to the width and height. We're going to say instance dot entrance x is equal to minus 20 instance dot entrance z is equal to 50 and now let's work out where the exit should be so again let's keep z oops and of course uh, this is where the uh, the bug I have not yet fixed comes back to bite me, but let's keep Z at about 50. And let's use 345, 340, yeah, 300 and 345 X. So now we'll say instance.exit x is equal to 345 and instance dot exit z is equal to 50 still there we go and now inside of our map when we move into the next room we can pull out the room we've just moved into um, so we'll just call this new room and this will always be equal to um, or let's see what we do so when we move to the next room we check to see if we're already in the furthest possible room and if we are we create a new room and we call table.insert to do that and then finally at the end here we do self.room equals self.room index uh, plus one or oh, sorry self.room index so we increase the room index um, so that we're pointing to the correct room. So we know that our new room, regardless of whether it is a freshly created room or one that already existed, will be equal to self.rooms, self.room index plus one. And when we're moving into the next room, we want to set the player.x to the new room um, entrance x and the player dot z equal to the new room entrance z and for the previous room we want to set the again we want to pull out our new room Um, and let's say our new room, oh yes, we know that our new room, well, let me think for a second. Yes, now we can just call the current room function. 
which is yes we do have a current yes current room lives on map so we can call uh, current room to get hold of our new room because we've already updated the room index and then if we're moving into a previous room we actually want to have a player standing on the exit so player dot x is equal to new room exit x and game dot player dot z is equal to new room dot exit z and also let's speed up our player slightly just so uh, we can test this a bit more quickly So let's say 40. Okay, so we should be able to move into the next room. Yep, and the previous room. Okay, and of course what will happen now is we will always start in the same position regardless of where we move in. So this also stops us from walking onto a uh, or walking into tiles we shouldn't be able to walk into in the previous room. Although the, the slight cost of this is that we've uh, lost a bit of... Um, we do break a bit of immersion because it changes where the player is exactly in the room when they enter. It doesn't preserve the... with for now. Cool. The other thing we need to do um, I'm not sure if people have noticed, but the camera is no longer following us. So the final thing we're going to do for this episode is just update our view, which was in graphics view, to make sure um, that it is always following us. So if we look at the update function, we see that we were using self.player x and y, so it should just be enough to go ahead and use the draw x and draw y. Let's try that. There we go. Now the camera follows us as it did before. Okay, so there's a bit of fixing up we still have to do, but I'm going to stop here because I've uh, gone on long enough for this evening and I'm starting to fall asleep. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, there's a couple of fixes this episode. We didn't make any big changes, but um, we're going to build on all of this in future. If you're enjoying the series so far, please do like and subscribe. It does help an awful lot. Hope you're having fun and I shall see you next time. Goodbye for now.